here, and this is how fast it goes. Sharp. 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 In the Woodyard logo, we etched into it, cut into it. Today on In the Woodyard, we got a brand new battery pack and solar panel charger. Here we go. Now I know some of you are saying, how come I keep getting these things? Because people offer to send them to me and uh, I like to try stuff. So they keep sending me these uh, battery packs. Now this is the fourth one I've gotten. I got two that are 1000 watts, one that's 1800 watt, and then this is the newest one. This is a 1500 watt. Now, when this company got a hold of me, I told them, I said, yes, I would test it, but I said, what I'm really looking for, what I could really use is a bigger one that's more powerful so I could run the elevator. And guys ask me all the time, well, do you try running the elevator? Do you try using the battery pack to run it? We did, yes, we tried the, all of them. They are not powerful enough. We need probably close to 2,500 to maybe 3,000 watts to run it. it. They won't do anything. It just kind of wiggles a little bit, the motor, kind of moans a little bit but nothing happens so we need more juice so but i have the other new generator the 4000 watt one that works just fine that runs it great now so when this company got a hold of me i told them i said yeah i would like one and i would really like would be one that is either bigger or the booster pack that goes with this one and they said that would be great, but they're not in production yet with the booster pack for this one. Because there is a booster that you can put on this that you can adapt to it and you can get 3000 watts out of it. So that would be really nice. So hopefully when they get that done, they're gonna send that to me and then I can, I can give it a try. So this one is by far the nicest one that I've received so far of these. And if you're gonna buy one, this would be the one I would get and I'll show you why right now. So first of all, the solar panels are way nicer than what anybody else has sent me. They are more solid, better designed, better looking. Um, everything about them is really nice. The, uh, the legs are much stiffer. The other one's kind of a floppy one. This one just works really well, pops right back in place. They got an enclosure here so you can put your cords right into it for your charging cords. And then the other cords are built right in here where you just plug right in and this wraps right around. If you see here, you can pull these out and this wraps right around the handle. So very well designed um, unit compared to the other ones, I think anyway, it's just, it's just nicer. So that's the solar panels. So as you can see on the inside here, I can open this up. There's the solar panels and it's a four panel jobby here so there's four of them so i'm just going to set this in the back because this is kind of kind of big which is really nice that it's a big solar panel we're going to put this right back here it's v t o m a n i would have put the o between the t and the v myself but maybe somebody else had that name i would have i would have called it vote vote man but it's it's vitoman vitamin vitamin like vitamin i don't know V-T-O-M-A-N, kind of a different name, but a lot of the companies that are making these, I don't know that they're using English as far as designing the name or a, a name that's easily used, but they do sell these in a lot of other countries. So maybe like in Russia or some other country, you can put all kinds of uh, consonants next to each other and still pronounce it. I'm Polish, so I have a hard time with that. Okay. so. The unit is very nice. Now, the first thing I'm gonna show you is the first thing that I noticed. This little top area, I thought, well, that looks like it's hinged, because of course I didn't read instructions, so I just opened it, well, look at this. Is that handy or what? None of the other ones have a place to store uh, the cords. So this is the main power cord right here, which is used for charging it um, from an outlet. And then you've got your other cords here. There is a car charging one, and then there's two USB cables here. Uh, that you can use they come right with it which is nice so this fits in here and then it's closed down i'm going to set this off to the side for now so there's that the next thing is that it has a light in the back which is all by itself in the back it's you can't see it now there you go it's on it's got a low medium high strobe and then the sos i guess where it does three at a time so it's got a light on the back. The nicest thing also about this one versus the other ones is it's got a double carry handle on the sides. Now one of them has a handle on the top and I think one of the other one has a handle on the side too, but this has got a nice double handle one. This is fairly heavy, however. Now, 
One of the things that I noticed when I first got it, I opened it up, it was charged to 80%, which was really nice. So right out of the box, you could use it. So it was at 80%. And so I thought, well, let's charge it up to 100%. So I got the cord out, plugged it into an outlet right away. And this thing is amazingly fast at charging. It says from zero to 100% about an hour. I plugged it in at 80% and it went to 100% in maybe six or seven minutes. A big fan kicks on here because it's really sucking the juice fast and that is one of the reasons why I believe they call it the Flash Speed 1500 because it's like in a flash it charges. I'm guessing that's why they call it that but it charges really fast. Now that's with uh, direct current right in from the, out, from the wall outlet. Now if you're going to charge it with the solar panels it says about four to six hours from zero to fully charged. So pretty darn fast. You can also charge it, like I said, with the uh, a car outlet, so you can charge it into your uh, uh, car and you can charge it, which is nice. It's got three outlets here um, for the AC. You can use jumper cables on it and you can charge it from another battery. So you can go battery to battery here, which is really cool. And I'm assuming that this port right here is the one that you're gonna use when they get the the booster pack to go with it to turn it into 3000 watts. I'm assuming that, but I don't know because it doesn't say anything about that, but I think that's where that would go. It's got USB-A outlets right here. Uh, there's three of those, and then there's a quick charge one down here, which I'm assuming that's like lightning fast. It must be faster than the other ones. Then there's the USB-C output. There is the AC input right here. So, Right there is where you plug it in. We plug in the regular cord, and then there's also the solar panel plugs and the DC input right here. So all of your input is right here, and the rest of them are outputs. Um, right here is your, your DC output. Uh, so and that you turn on and off. It's got plugs, nice rubber plugs that cover everything up. So there's your DC, the USB, and then the AC. It just This is how you turn it on and off, too. There's no on and off switch. It's just you, you push the AC and it goes on. A lot of the other ones have on off switches. So other than that, very cool. I'm going to peel this off. This is the first time this is coming off. This is the protector that goes over the front cover here. And uh, so it shows it's when it's charging. There's too much sun right now to show you, but when you turn it on, it does light up. There's a light up here and it shows the fan running and all that. So very cool. Now, because I've got it out here and I've got it, um, I got a saw sitting here in my truck and it needs to be sharpened. So we're going to plug in my uh, rotary tool, my Dremel, and we're going to sharpen it. We're going to use this baby to sharpen uh, up my chainsaw right now. So there is uh, an on switch. You just push the AC like I mentioned, but there's no off. It just automatically turns off if you don't plug anything into it. Now, I think it's about a minute and it just shuts off. So there's no off switch. So that's built right into it. And uh, the other thing that's very unique about this unit that I didn't mention so far is that a lot of the other units I've received have a cord with a charging block, you know, for the conversion, for the, the power going in, where you have to have that, and there's really no place to put it because it's a big brick type thing, you know, with the cords coming out that you plug into the wall and then plug into the unit. This doesn't have that because it's built inside. So all you gotta do is plug it in with the cord that comes with it. So, much better. Uh, when I got my other units, I thought the same thing. A lot of the electronics that you get nowadays have the charging bricks. Uh, and this it has it built right in, which to me makes so much sense. It's about time somebody came up with it. Now, one of the drawbacks is, is this is heavier. This weighs 40 pounds. And some of the other units I have that are the 1,000 watt ones are only like 25 or something like that. But the 1,800 watt one that I have from a different company is about the same weight, right around, I think it's 38 or something like that. And this one is 40 pounds. So this one weighs, it says right on the box here, I just looked, 41.4 pounds or 18.8 kilograms for those of you from across the pond or to the north. The other thing that's different about this one is the solar panel. It's a much better design like I mentioned. Everything is built right into it. However, because it's better built, it has better materials. I think there's a thicker layer of plastic as far as the backing and the actual panels themselves. It is heavier. That solar panel, those right over to my side here, weighs 20 pounds 
So this is 20 pounds, whereas a lot of the other ones are maybe 10, 12, something like that, be my guess. Now this is a peak power of 220 watts going in, says right on there. Uh, working voltage is 48 volts. And uh, there's some other information on there, but that's really all that really matters. And this unit right here, it says right on the box, it has an AC output um, and it says it's 1500 watts, but the peak is 3000. So I guess more, but I don't know why there's such a big difference there. I'm not an electrician, don't know how all that works, but this is a really nice unit. I really like this one a lot. So for those of you that are new to my channel, I do use a Dremel or rotary tool for sharpening my chains. I gave up using a file a long time ago because this is about 10 times faster and about 10 times easier. There's guys that love their files and that's how they like to sharpen. That's fine. I don't. I can sharpen with a file just fine. Uh, I do it quite often. I carry a file with me in my kit when I go out into the woods and stuff, but I also have a portable one of these that has a battery pack. And this is what I use 90% of the time, 95, maybe 99% of the time, because it's faster and easier. And there's people like, oh, you're heating up the teeth. It's bad for it. Never had a problem with a tooth break. Never had a problem with it not being sharp. If you've seen any of my videos, my saws are sharp. They cut fantastic. And this is the easiest thing to do. Now I've got a little vice here that the uh, saw is in. You're gonna see it's mounted on a board and this little vice right here. I'm gonna talk about that a little later. Bert made this. It's pretty cool. So, and we're gonna probably be making these and selling them, we think. We're gonna see. So we're gonna start this thing up and we're gonna sharpen up this chain. So I'll do it right now. So I do wear safety glasses all the time. I do wear ear protection all the time. And I do wear gloves when I sharpen a chain all the time because I've been cut a lot of times. And uh, so it's not that much fun. So we're gonna start right here and this is how fast it goes. Sharp. 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 All done. So I'm gonna answer the questions that come up all the time when I sharpen. This is a Dremel 3000. They're like 60, 70 bucks, something like that. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know, I bought it a while ago. I've got four or five different Dremels. I think I've got four Dremels and I've got another one that's called the Easedo. Um, they all work. Any rotary tool will work just fine. The Dremels work great. Um, like I said, I got one that's got a battery pack that I take with me when I go on location. Um, but now that I've got this battery pack, I can take this one along and I can go anywhere in the woods and have power. So that's kind of cool. My battery pack one that I have that has a little uh, battery in the back, I generally get about three sharpenings out of it and that's it. So if I go on location, if I'm cutting all day and I need to sharpen my saws up, I only have so many sharpenings. And then if that dies, then I can just put on a new chain because I carry extra chains with me all the time. Now, Next question is what speed do I operate on? Wide open, as fast as it'll go. There you go. Next thing, what kind of bits? They are Oregon, right here they are. Oregon stones, 730 seconds. Where do I get them? You can buy them on Amazon. You can get them at uh, box stores. I buy mine at a local box store, it's called Fleet Farm. Uh, they sock them right in the uh, chainsaw area. And for a three pack, it's about six bucks. So $2 per bit. Next question comes up all the time. How many sharpenings do I get out of a bit? I get about, on average, I would say six to eight sharpenings. Now, if you hit something where you've got some major damage to your teeth, like if they're really bad, if you hit a stone or a, a nail or any kind of piece of metal or something like that, you're gonna wear your bit down faster because you're gonna be sharpening long enough. I'm just touching them up like I just did there. Um, I'll probably get a good eight sharpenings out of this. Now, if you're sharpening with a file, generally your file is only gonna last you about that long too. So it's about the same cost, whether you're using a file or you're using a Dremel for sharpening with a stone bit like this. Now, the thing is, is I'm saving time because I wanna be cutting, not sharpening. A lot of guys enjoy sharpening. 
I don't enjoy any kind of maintenance at all that I have to do. I'm not a mechanic. I don't want to be a mechanic. I want stuff to just work. That's why I try to buy better equipment and just have it work all the time. Um, I can fix stuff. I just don't like to. I'd rather be doing the thing I like to do. Like when it comes to like, say just like a vehicle, I just want it to work. I don't want to be working on it. I want it to be working for me. And that's how I feel about pretty much all the equipment. So I think that's everything I covered there. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I do have a file. This is a Husqvarna file. It's got a smooth edge here. So I'm going to take the rakers down one stroke. In general, about every other time I sharpen the teeth, I will take a stroke down on the teeth, on the, uh, the rakers or the depth gauges, whatever you want to call them. Now, people will ask, you know, how much do you take off? A little bit. That's how much. When I put a brand new chain on, I will generally take two strokes right away before I even start cutting. I find that's the right amount. They have the rakers kind of high for safety reasons, I believe. I don't know. I think they need to come down just a little bit. Or if you're going to be using a saw with not a lot of power, maybe you don't need to take the rakers down. But I have 572s and 592s. So I want it to cut as fast as I can cut because I can make more money, but I can't make more time. So. That's why I don't want to be a mechanic. I don't want to spend time working on any stuff. I just want it to work. I'm kind of impatient that way. Okay, let's take the rakers down. So now when I just sharpened, I did not mark a tooth. Usually I'll take a marker and I'll mark the top of a tooth with a red marker. And I just did that just to show you guys because I didn't do it when I started. I generally don't need to because I can see if it's sharp or not when I'm coming around. And you noticed I just went side to side. I didn't do one side, then the other side like you traditionally do when you sharpen a chain. With a Dremel, you don't need to do that. You can just sharpen. So I'm going to start on this tooth right here. And I'm just going to do one stroke across, pushing away. And I kind of start at the tip and I try to give it the same amount of pressure. There's one, there's another one, another one. And we're gonna pull this. So we're gonna do one side and then the other side. And again, I'm not taking much off, just a little bit. When I'm cutting, I know if it needs to uh, have the rakers taken down. You can just tell. You can feel it. If you cut enough, they'll start to learn. But in general, about every other sharpening, I just take it down just a part of a stroke here. There we go. So now I'm going to show the other direction, which is the far side. Do the same thing. Just a stroke on each one of these. And again, like I said, it's more of a feel thing than anything. I know when I'm cutting if it needs, if they need to come down. I also know if I overdid it. <laughs> um, but I've just done it long enough now cutting and most guys that cut a lot, you end up just knowing if your saw is cutting like you want it to or not. Yeah, okay, just got a couple more. Gotta be getting close. Yeah, here comes the, the marker one. One more. All done. There we go. Sharp. So I thought I would just show you guys. This is my little vise. Bert even put my name on it. And it does have a In the Woodyard logo. He etched into it, cut into it. It's just a little clamp. We're not totally done with the design. We're gonna put a platform on it and we're gonna put a another part on there yet too but that's that's the little vice that we made that's going to go on the board so we are going to manufacture and sell these don't know how much don't know when but it's coming down the road so pretty nice and slick piece there so there you go sharp chainsaw new electric power pack for sharpening and doing stuff here in the wood yard the uh, vt old man Vito man, Vito man, Vito man, however you want to say it. There it is. That's it for today, folks. You know what to do. Poke the buttons. I'll be back tomorrow at 5.30 a.m. Another video for you right now. Go watch some more videos. It'd be awesome if you did. There's over 1,100 on my channel waiting for you to watch right now. Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.